Dave Seaman is back here on SSP TV. Happy to have him back, the standard speaker, sports editor. Dave, let's talk some high school football to start things off. Tamaqua undefeated. They control their own destiny. You get a win over Jim Thorpe this weekend, this Friday. You're the Schuylkill League Division I champions. I went to go cover one of their practices, Dave. I figured, oh, let's cover this offense. You have Nick Briner, Nate Boyle running the football, very dominant. And I ended up, they, they talked about the Blue Flock defense, their nickname. They had all those shutouts, Dave. That they've been really solid with linemen like Matt Amadea. I mean, all around, just Tamaqua, very impressive, and now now a big opportunity for Sam Bonner's team on, on Friday night. You got to see them recently play. Yeah, I got to see them play against North School in a showdown, and it was a great atmosphere for a high school football game in Tamaqua. They went out and proved why they're, they're, they're one of the best teams in the area, if not the best team in the area right now. And uh, like I said, their defense is phenomenal. They, they, they fly to the football. Uh, they play complimentary football, though. I mean, they're, they're very good offensively, uh, a solid quarterback, like you said, and Braden Knobloch, who's done a fabulous job. Uh, two backs that any team would love to have, and Boyle and Briner. Uh, offensive line, they're physical at the point of attack. Uh, and, and like I said, defensively, they, they don't give up uh, yards that, that many yards. Uh, it's just a, it, it's a fun team to watch. And uh, if you appreciate Cole Region history football, uh, they're, they're the team for you because they, they do it uh, the old-fashioned way. Dave, I wanted to talk about Hazleton Area High School football. Interesting season for them. A lot of expectations in that. They had some close losses where they've had the lead at halftime and then ended up losing games against some very good teams. They were banged up for a while. They're getting healthy. All of a sudden, though, I think if you're a Cougar fan or the Cougars with district playoffs coming up, you have to feel pretty good. I mean, about your chances going in there and possibly winning a district championship. It's all going to be about their health. I mean, uh, so some more guys banged up against Scranton uh, this past Friday. Uh, but the the Cougars, you know, when, when they're clicking, they're, they're very tough to defend. The Cougars' problems been on de on a defensive side uh, you know there have been a lot of teams that have been able to move up and down on the field on the Cougars uh, you know both via the run and by the pass uh, and, and you know you got to shore up the defense but if they shore up the defense just a little bit uh, you know I, I'm confident that the Cougars can score on anybody and uh, and that, that that sub region that they're in with Williamsport Delaware Valley and Scranton uh, they lost a shootout to Williamsport. They beat Scranton and Delaware Valley is a, a, a close game that they lost. Uh, it, it's there for the taking. Uh, the Cougars definitely have the opportunity to win a district championship this year. Uh, the Cougar cross country team, Dave, a big storyline this fall has been the weather and so many meets getting postponed for them. They're undefeated and actually so is Holy Redeemer. They're going to decide the Wyoming Valley Conference Championship at the meet coming up this week, the actual league meet. So that's happening. Also, District 2 AAA tennis, Hazleton area's Lily Nowak, um, girls tennis. She's the number one seed, but you said there's a freshman out there who's also very, very talented. It won't be, it won't be a cakewalk for Lily trying to win a district championship. Uh, no doubt about it. Uh, from what I understand, uh, my, my, my sources in the Scranton area uh, <laughs> Say Abingdon Heights as a freshman who's ranked in the middle states and uh, uh, a very outstanding player. But uh, Lily's been there before. I mean, she she knows what it takes to play in the tournament. She's played in some tough matches, you know, in, in district competition. She's been there. She's won a lot of district medals, so she has the experience. But uh, I, I'm sure the Abingdon Heights girl too has played in some tough matches, not necessarily on the high school level, but in uh, out, outside of uh, high school competition. So uh, it, it'll be a challenge for Lily. But uh, knowing Lily, great personality and uh, a great tennis player in her own right, and she'll be up for the challenge. Dave, let's talk college football now. Notre Dame control their own destiny. I'm get by Pitt this weekend. They have some big wins on their resume already. Chances that, is this the year, Dave, you think Notre Dame could break into the college football playoff? I, I think they do it. There's those few teams, you know, you have to play Navy who plays them tough. USC isn't ranked, but you have to go out to Southern California. But I look right now, and I think the Irish are in. I, I agree. I, I think they just have to shore up the offense, get a little more consistency on the offensive end. Uh, quarterback Book has done a great job since he's uh, taken over full-time quarterbacking job. A little hiccup against Pitt, but uh, Notre Dame's defense is spectacular. I mean, you, you got to be able to move the ball in the Irish, and uh, uh, teams really haven't been able to do that much this year uh, as long as they get, uh, you know, a decent ha uh, offensive game, and they've, they've shown they can do that as well. Uh, I think the Irish are definitely going to be in the thick of things. Penn State, two straight losses. Dave, deja vu from last year. You lose to Ohio State, and then you lose once again to Michigan State. What, Dave, what's going on right now? I said the offense looks to me like they need a little bit of a swagger. They need some identity. They need some confidence right now. I, I agree with that. I mean, you have Trace McSorley trying to do things by himself. Now, whether that's by design, you know, putting the ball in the hands of the senior. Of course, on fourth down against Ohio State, they didn't put the, hand, the ball in his hands. Uh, but, no, they, they, they need some more people to step up and uh, be a spark for them. K.J. Hamler's done that, you know, occasionally, maybe not enough. Uh, but now you're starting to see like what it's, life is like without Mike Kosicki and Deshaun Hamilton and uh, even Saquon Barkley. I mean, uh, you know, Miles Sanders is at a, a fine year, uh, other than the Ohio State game where they kind of bottled him up. Uh, but he's not; has, he hasn't been really a threat as, of a receiver as Saquon was. 
So they got to get him more involved in the passing game, I think. Uh, the line play has to be a little bit more consistent, especially when they need a play to make a fourth down or a first down late in the game uh, to, to salt away these games. Yeah, when we talk about this being a young team, coming into this Michigan State game, Trace McSorley, um, James Franklin is talking about um, best practice they've had since James Franklin has been there. And Franklin even said, you know, something's happening on Saturdays that we're not seeing in practice. This is a young team. They do look nervous at times sometimes to me. Do you think this is a little bit of let's mature a little bit? Uh, I, I agree with that. I, I think they're really, especially on the defensive side, they, they, they lost eight starters from the uh, defense from last year. Uh, they don't have that one guy to say, I'm going to make a play to end this game. Dave, thank you so much for your time here. Read his work in the Standard Speaker. That's it for this week.